thought maybe I should show you why you always want to take an engine apart. Uh, this m engine might look good on the outside, but uh, if it's an unknown engine, you could have something like this inside. You can see where the mice or chipmunks or something have left a lot of stuff inside this engine. Uh, seeds and I don't know what this is. I guess it's a seed. Uh, but anyways, it's a mess if you just started this engine up without opening it up and inspecting it and cleaning all this stuff out of there. It would run probably, but it wouldn't run very long before these bearings would be shot. So uh, you can't just take a used engine that's unknown and throw it into your airplane or snowmobile or something and expect that you're going to get any kind of life out of it without looking at it first. You might find it's in perfect shape, but chances are you'll find some kind of crap in there, especially if it hasn't been stored very well. This is what I'm talking about, those little feet that space the, the shaft seal away from this end bearing. You can see one right here. You can see another one right here. The only place that oil can get in there, this bearing, either in or out of there, is this little tiny slot right here. So that's where I modify to make it so that it can hit that and to make sure that oil can go in and out of there. This is the oil way here, which enters into this transfer port here, which there's going to be a lot of mixture of air and fuel. Your fuel mixture is going to go through here and up through these transfer ports pretty fast. Now my guess is that, the, at least my theory is, that the air passing over this hole is going to want to draw oil through there. And the oil will come up through this hole and go up through the transfer port. Whenever the port's open there's going to be a rush of air across that hole, therefore it'll make a low pressure and it should suck stuff right through there. Now how does the oil get into that bearing? This is what I'm talking about here. This is this is where that hole that we were just looking at, this is where it it comes up right where that shaft seal is and has to go through that narrow little little point. It has to go through this area on this bearing. Now you have to remember when this is all put together these bearings and this shaft seal are all like mounted in a big tube. So the only way that oil can get into these bearings is through here and there's a little spacer down in there. I don't know if you can see it but there's a spacer in there. And the oil, air and oil mixture that's, that's blowing around in your crankcase is going to go on these balls right here and get into this bearing quite easily. But then Right between the bearings there's a little spacer, and the spacer is a great big washer, which more or less blocks anything getting into this bearing. And I believe that the air and oil mixture should go down here through this bearing, through this bearing to lubricate those balls, through this slot, and should come out up through the transfer port. Oil is going to accumulate in this oil way right here, it's just a little groove in there, and run down that hole and it would run back into these bearings here when the engine shut off if the engine's being run vertically and not inverted. It won't work if it's inverted. But what I intend to change is this spacer in here. I did it on my Chinook. Of course it's only run 25 hours but I haven't had any problem with that. So I intend to put in a spacer that's not so big in diameter that it covers up those balls. These two rows of balls will be open then and air and oil mixture can get uh, across between them all because it's all mounted inside of a tube. You just have to tell me how oil could get in there. There's no way. And uh, I don't know about this side but I'll have a look at this too to see what this is. This is on this 583 engine. These bearings are quite a bit larger on the 583. on on the PTO end.
I've got the two the two big bearings off this end of the crankshaft they're in there with the aluminum spacer between them I can do this with one hand here uh, the thing that really strikes me as odd is the aluminum spacer fits tight on the shaft not real tight but you know there's not much clearance there and it's completely solid there's no holes in it it's obviously a casting but uh, they probably did that to make it lighter and save a little weight I suppose uh, now next to the to the web on the crankshaft you've got this on there for a spacer now this makes sense to me this spaces the crankshaft out gets it away from the radius anytime you grind a shaft you're gonna have a radius in there and it spaces it away from there and allows oil to get into the bearing but once it gets in there how's it going to get through that thing I don't see much way they have of getting oil to the outer bearing the one on the very ends on both ends of this thing uh, it seems to me they're really trying to stop oil from getting in there that's what they're trying to do this one on the other end has this big uh, it looks like a slinger but it's supposed to act as a spacer but rather than having it thin like this one they've got it so it blocks the the balls on that bearing or almost all of them would be I mean oil could go through there but it's pretty tough uh, especially when it hits this slinger which is gonna it's spinning with the crankshaft it's gonna want to sling oil off of it so how in the heck they're gonna get oil into that bearing I don't know it's the same way as this one they're trying to stop oil from going in that bearing I went and took a little nap and thought about this for a while and I have decided that their object with these things is not to keep oil out the what they're trying to keep out is the mixture of oil and air and gasoline and everything else uh, it's what they call stuffing the crankcase they try to eliminate as much wasted space in there as possible so that when the piston comes down and compresses the charge in the crankcase uh, it builds up more pressure if you have less volume in the crankcase so I think that's what the idea of these things were was to cut the volume uh, the only trouble is if you do that it's it's gonna cut the oil too it's it's gonna make that bearing run hotter uh, I really think it's it probably gives them a few more horsepower but for cutting the longevity of the engine I don't think it's too good an idea I don't think they'd have a problem if they used instead of using these these plastic uh, bearing separators if they used metal ones they probably wouldn't have a problem with that so much but uh, but these things fail pretty much you know because of the plastic in there the plastic will melt and fall apart or crack or something so this thin spacer here that's not too big around that's okay this thing here is just meant to block as much air and mixture from going through that bearing as possible when the piston comes down and I think that's a mistake so I'm gonna cut this spacer down a little bit this one here obviously makes a difference which way you put it in you'd want to put this side here uh, closest to the to the engine closest to the to the uh, connecting rods and so forth uh, this is just a spacer for between the bearings but it's cast and it's it's open in here this fits fairly close to the shaft but there's clearance between it and that's the only way that oil has a getting through here is, is right where that shaft is turning and as you can see they haven't cut a turbine or anything here on the shaft to try to drive oil this way so this end bearing here it's gonna run really hot I think so I'll probably make a modification to this there's a o-ring that fits on the outside of this that keeps it from spinning so it it can't turn but really it's just a spacer between the bearings is what it is and because of all this area I don't know how many cc's this is in here I I guess I can take a, a bottle and measure it see how many cc's this displaces in here but that's what they're trying to get rid of is 
is as much uh, cubic centimeters as they can in the crankcase and therefore they'd have a stronger charge going into the cylinder but uh, you know it's 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 not really worth that kind of effort I don't think I, I mean it it probably does give them a little bit more horsepower but uh, for what it does to these bearings I think is nuts if if you were going to go that far I think they should you know sh should put the like these these shaft seals uh, if you really wanted to stuff the crankcase, put the, sh the shaft seal so it was it was on here running right next to the engine and then put the bearings on here. So then to get oil to the bearings you could make a separate, make these run submerged in oil if you wanted. You could have a little oil reservoir and the bearings would be running in oil all the time if the, if the seals were right up against the engine. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know why they don't do that. Then you wouldn't. The only thing that the oil mix would be lubricating would be your uh, connecting rods here, which, as the gas comes through the carburetors, it's going to go in this slot and it takes care of this roller bearing here. But, uh, but I really think that uh, if you really wanted to seal something like that, I'd put the seal right next to that and run this submerged in oil and the same on the other end and uh, the bearings would stay cool and probably last a real long time uh, but you would need to have some sort of a reservoir and I I don't think you'd want to have it completely full of oil you'd want to have just a little bit across the bottom they'd probably have to be an oil level or something and uh, just let those balls churn through the oil and, and uh, you might have to change the oil once in a while but I think that's the way I would do it I mean this is this is not my engineering here, this is somebody else's, but when I see what they're trying to do here, I think, I can, I can kind of see what they were trying to do, and I think I'd, 